Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm so excited today because I this is where it all began in my car. If you see uh, the first few videos that I did, they were in the car and it was such a great place to relax. It's just a you know finding a spot where there's no distraction. Nobody's asking you for food. There's nobody scratching on your leg to, to be taken outside to go to the bathroom. Um, it's just, it's peaceful. It's peaceful. I don't get any inter, um, disruptions. And I, I'm able to focus more. I mean, in my house, it's just so chaotic. It's always on the go, 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 go. So this is such a nice, peaceful place for me that I enjoy just um, doing my Bible study, doing my my time, and I haven't been out much, so it's uh, this is a treat for me, treat for me, but today we are continuing the book of Revelations. We are reading uh, Revelation, Revelation, not Revelations. 19 19 so let's get started all right let's begin revelation 19 people in heaven praise god after this vision and announcement, I heard what sounded like a great many people in heaven saying, Hallelujah! Salvation, glory, and power belong to our God because his judgments are true and right. He, was, he has punished the prostitute who'd made the earth evil with her sexual sin. He has paid her back for the death of his servants. And again they said, Hallelujah! She is burning and her smoke will rise forever and ever. Then the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures bowed down and worshipped God who sits on the throne. They said, Amen! Hallelujah! Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you who serve him and all you who honor him, both small and great. Then I heard what sounded like a great many people, like the noise of flooding water and like the noise of a loud thunder. The people were saying, Hallelujah. Our Lord God, the Almighty rules. Let us rejoice and be happy and give God glory because the wedding of the Lamb has come and the Lamb's bridge has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given to her to wear. The fine linen means the good things done by God's holy people. And the angel said to me, Write this, Happy are those who have been invited to the wedding meal of the Lamb. And the angel said, These are the true words of God. Then I bowed down at the angel's feet to worship him. But he said to me, Do not worship me. I am a servant like you and your brothers and sisters who have the message of Jesus. Worship God, because the message about Jesus is the spirit that gives all prophecy. The rider on the white horse. Then I saw heaven open, and there before me was a white horse. The rider on the horse is called Faithful and True. And he is right when he judges and makes war. 
His eyes are like burning fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him, which no one but himself knows. He is dressed in a robe, dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven, dressed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on a white horses on white horses. Out of the rider's mouth comes a sharp sword that he will use to defeat the nations, and he will root them with a rod of iron. He will crush out the wine in the winepress of the terrible anger of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his upper leg was written this name, King and Lord of lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun. He called with a loud voice to all the birds flying in the sky, come and gather together for the great feast of God, so that you can eat the bodies of kings, generals, mighty people, horses, and their riders, and the bodies of all people, free, slave, small and great. Then I saw the beast and the king of the earth. Their armies were gathered together to make war against the rider on the horse and his army. But the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who did the miracles for the beast. The false prophet had used these miracles to trick those who had the mark of the beast and worshipped his idol. The false prophet and the beast were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. And their armies were killed with a sword that came out of the mouth of the rider on the horse, and all the birds ate the bodies until they were full. <sighs> Hallelujah! sounds crazy of what would happen if you don't follow, but it's just you can't fake God, you can't manipulate God into anything God knows God sees God can, can see what you're thinking, what you're feeling what your intentions are you can't get away from that Okay, so life lesson. Situation. The heavenly multitude responded to God's judgment with enthusiasm and praise. Jesus, suffering servant of the gospel, became the righteous judge. Yes. Observation. When Jesus returns, he will complete the work he began. He will gather his people and destroy Satan. Hallelujah. Inspiration. Triumph is a precious thing. We honor the triumph. The gallant soldier sitting astride his steed. The determined explorer returning from his discovery. The winning athlete holding aloft the triumph trophy of victory. Yes, we love a triumph. Triumph is fleeting, though. Hardly does one taste victory before it is gone. Achieved yet now history. No one remains champion forever. Time for yet another conquest, another victory. Perhaps this is the absurdity of Paul's claim. But thanks to be God who always leads us in triumphal procession. Here is the big difference between victory in Christ and victory in the world. A victor in the world rejoices over something he did, swimming the English Channel, climbing Everest, making a million, but the believer rejoices over who he is, a child of God, a forgiven sinner, and a heir of eternity. 
Nothing can separate us from our triumph in Christ. Nothing. Our triumph is not based upon our feelings, but upon God's gift. Our triumph is based not upon our perfection, but upon God's forgiveness. How precious is this triumph, for even though we are pressed on every side, the victory is still ours. Nothing can alter the loyalty of God. Triumphant in Christ, it is not something we do, it's something we are. Application Christ has made you triumphant throughout the stress of daily living. Look to Christ with joy. He has conquered sin, defeated Satan, and will one day take you home with him. Okay, so sometimes we feel, um, and I felt this over this this past week, um, I took a little vacation with my husband and we took a it was like a couple's um we went to the key to key west we had a great great time relaxed had fun um but there was something i came back um as we are here on earth we tend to uh, expect more from ourselves we see others and we see how much they've they've done how much they created Um, you see their passions you see their their victories their earthly victories Um, of course you know life is not perfect we see the ups we see the downs we you know and from other people's perspective when you look into your own life um, not everybody sees what you go through personally but I came back and I and I was feeling like man I really want I really want a direction I want to see victory in this area and in this area and in this area and this area and I want to work for it so I have victory in all areas but at the same time I feel so out of the norm like there's a part of me that doesn't belong here like it's so strange that I I sometimes don't feel like myself like it's not me that I'm just kind of I'm going through this life and and it's I felt like I felt like the Lord was telling me here that, you know, it's like that saying, that scripture where it's like, look look to the things of the Lord, not the things of, of, you know, of earth. And, And maybe that's where I'm trying to focus on accomplishing the victories of today, of earthly, earthly victories. And maybe... I shouldn't beat myself up so much. Um, it was. It was also. There was another thing too that I was looking into. Um, maybe like a study Bible of uh, a study book on just like a personal growth. And I ran into this this website that I didn't agree, but I can kind of agree. But it was talking about how we shouldn't focus so much on ourselves to be to be better it it was almost saying to that whole work on your personal growth um is not great because you tend to focus on the things of the earth and not of them above so i understand that but i also feel that you can do both. You can have both. You can focus on yourself to be a better person, be a better Christian with faith, with keeping God in line with what He wants for your life. And that's my whole, 
that's my whole issue. That's why I feel like I don't be, like I can't find my place. And maybe that's just God kind of directing, um, directing me to like stand still, be still. Maybe I just shouldn't move until ten years from now. Maybe I should just, you know, I have a purpose right now. And maybe he has a purpose for you right now to just be still and not be aiming for this victorious thing that can possibly distract us from his, from God, from his plan, from his will. And so here comes, it all comes again, trusting the Lord focusing and praying to be able to find peace where we're at. Find peace and find con what's the word? Content contentment um, where we are right now. And I pray for, for um, direction and just to be happy, just to be content, just to be for direction and guidance. I always pray for direction and guidance. I started the Facebook, um, my Facebook prayer request. Um, I picked out a few people that I saw that were in need and I am praying for them for like 14 solid days and um, Last time I did this, it had so many, I saw so many blessings, and um, I encourage you guys to do the same. Uh, leave me a comment below if you want to be a part of it. I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, be good, be blessed, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.